It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Ann Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, along with my amazing, wonderful guest co-host, Miss Keisha Monk. Ladies and gentlemen, she's been changing the way people podcast. She puts the cast in podcasts since 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, and Ganguza. Oh, Keisha. I love that. Wow. <laughs> that actually thank you. sucked, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Keisha. You know, I think you have a little bit of experience. You sound like you have some experience doing that. A little bit of promo work there. Keyword little bit. <laughs> well, I, I know right now you are doing some steady promo work for PBS. Is that not correct? I totally am. That's pretty awesome. Now, that's that, that's such a genre that I am not as familiar with. Uh-huh. I don't do much work in. I think, uh, I think our boss listeners would love to hear a little bit about that genre. It's crazy. I actually got that gig because somebody on Facebook saw that I did voiceover and they saw like a, I don't know, a one ad somewhere. I don't know if it was on Craigslist or whatever, but, <laughs> you know, they, they gave me they gave me a, um, you know, a lead. And at the time, I really didn't have a promo demo, so I just kind of faked one a little bit to just give them a little bit of sample. Sure. And they hired me, and I've been doing, this is like my, I'm going into my fifth season next year. Wow. That's amazing. So, I know you're doing one or two series, or what's, tell me what, what, what you've done in the past. What it is, is I am the promo voice for... POV. POV is a documentary series that Mm -hmm. um, airs on PBS. I think they've probably been doing it since like 88. So I don't know how long that is. 30 years, 30 something years. Uh, Yeah. So um, they kind of like what I did. And it's been interesting. I really had to self-teach, though, um, because, again, I hadn't had any promo experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I got a little friend. I got little friends who do certain things in the industry. Peep, peep, Randy uh, Thomas. And I was just going to say, (laughs) did Randy have something to help help you out? Well, of course. (laughs) Yeah. And I try not to be too, you know, heavy leaning on getting help. I really try to self help sure. as much as possible. Of course, I got a coach and then I just uh, listened to promos with a different ear. You know, that's that's so interesting because I had Randy guest host a couple of times uh, for my VO Peeps group. And I've also had some other promo classes with other uh, guest directors. And one of the biggest things is for you to just listen mm-hmm. to turn that television on and listen and listen yes. and listen and get to know the show. So what would be some important things that you would have to know before you get into promo like how like how would somebody get into promo if they wanted to well first of all just like when you want to get into voiceover you kind of have to educate yourself and really know what promo is promo is a completely different delivery it's not like commercial it's not like narration and it's something that I really can't explain I mean you really just have to listen again with a different ear to Mm -hmm. all of the promos that are on television and again again just like any other way that you um, approach copy is to know what you're promoting it yeah, know the help. show. Know the show. Um, and that's very important to me, by the way. I was going to say, I would think that the delivery really is dependent on the show and the brand audience that they're trying to capture. Well, I would mm-hmm. imagine they want to capture everybody, but there is a certain audience that they are probably trying to target. And that would have to really have a lot to do with the sound, I would imagine, when you are doing the promo or you're auditioning. Of course. I mean, I wouldn't read a Nickelodeon promo the same that I would read, you know, uh, yeah. an own or a live. <laughs> Lifetime promo, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, know the audience. And, you know, another thing, Anne, don't be afraid to, well, once you get your feet in, don't be afraid to ask questions because even though I have a little bit of experience whenever I do get the opportunity to do a promo, I'll ask them. I'll say, you know, can you send me, uh, you know, the the instrumental that you're going to use under my voice? Are there any pictures that can help me visualize exactly what I'm, you know, it really, really helps me to know know what I'm promoting. And that's really how I've been able to succeed at it. And so what you're saying to me, Keisha, 
<laughs> is that you don't necessarily need an agent to get promo. Mm, I ain't saying that at all. Uh, okay. I, I've never, well, well, PBS is different because that's like um, li- listener supported television, uh, listener, listener supported, viewer supported yes. television. And I say that because I had a commercial on PBS and the way that I acquired it was very, very different. And it was, yeah. It, of course. It ran, yes, exactly. So um, you deal with different people and they're not necessarily working through agents. Right, right. Uh, so I guess it depends then on the network it totally does but here's this check this out because we're in this age of streaming um there are promos that are created outside of network television there are all kinds of uh, programming you know online programming that Mm -hmm. that need promo voices so it's not impossible to go After that kind of work, the network stuff is probably what you won't get exposed to unless you have an agent. Right. And so, but now, what isn't being streamed these days? Exactly. There's a question. So, you know, how important, and look, I I love my agents, and I would never dare to think that they aren't important in my voiceover career. But what's so interesting is with this digital technology and the streaming technology, and especially now, you know, during the the pandemic, I mean, I just... All, all tons of streaming mm-hmm. like content is coming out, and so how do you think you would approach if you didn't if you if you didn't have your agent to help you out? How would you approach getting work in promo? Let's say for it, something that was streaming. Okay, so. I just want to preface this by saying that I am not a know-it-all. I can tell you how I would do it. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, my mm-hmm. word is not, you know, <laughs> in stone here. <laughs> but, but research, research, research. What you do is you watch a particular show. This is how I would do it. I would watch the credits. I would figure out who is producing the show. I mm-hmm. would get a name. I would LinkedIn. I'd find out how to contact them. Um, and I would just basically introduce myself, just introduce myself. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know that that's a, that's a little iffy and, but you know, <laughs> but I have used that approach for some of my work. I just figure out who, who are the guys behind the production board you know networking is such a a wonderful thing and i know that we you know we have another podcast on this but i will bring up i'll say the word and i'm gonna i want you to just take a deep breath keisha because i know how excited you get but let's just say clubhouse could be an amazing way to network with people like we were just talking about there's some heavy hitters there it could be an amazing way to network and what i really like about it and and i i know you're going to be able to go off on this um what i really like about it is that it 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 can be such an authentic platform to get to know someone and it's so not like right now it's it's i think it's in its infancy and it's in that that stage where it hasn't been spoiled by marketers (laughs) and i say that with the most love in my my heart for marketers because we all market our own businesses, of right? Of course we do. But yeah. what we don't want is that platform to all of a sudden become spoiled by all of a sudden people are going to be marketing on it or people are going to be completely selling things on it, which is what everybody you know laments about uh, on social media is like, oh, here come the ads, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. while this is an unspoiled platform right now, this is an amazing opportunity to really network with some heavy hitters like you told me before that you had got a contact at NBC. Um that was like just reached out to you and and boom i mean it was it was it didn't seem to take a whole long time <laughs> so you know actually th- this is what i would do Th- this <laughs> this is kind of crazy you get a name right you hear a name you're mm-hmm. watching a program and you're like oh my god i would totally love to do promos for this network you wait for the credits you grab a name you take that name you plug it into linkedin you look at their you look at look at their resume and not only mm-hmm. that see who your common contacts are reach out to your common contacts hey do you know joe schmo from you know lifetime uh do, do you think that he would be interested i mean can you introduce me so forth and Absolutely. so on i also do the same it with facebook just plug a name in pull up their profile see who my common friends are um and then see if they're on clubhouse and then that way you can hear them talk you can hear them speak I think that that you hit the nail on the head there is is find the common contacts because uh, a friend of a friend or, you know, a contact of a contact is a great kind of way to get your foot in the door uh, without coming in with a cold 
call, so yes. to speak, or a cold, you know, um, yes. connection, which mm-hmm. I think is so difficult. And I know that myself, when somebody just reaches out, I'm like, what do they want? You know, like, what, <laughs> what are they trying to get from me? And it, it immediately kind of, I, I repel. But if you have a contact of a contact, I love how you said LinkedIn, because that's a great way to see your common contacts, as well as Facebook, your friendships, um, as well as, well, I would say, you know, Google is, is so simple. Um, and the more that you, the, I would say, do your searches in Facebook and LinkedIn first and find out like maybe more in-depth information about them and the company, uh, the network that they're working for. And then and then you can plug that into Google and maybe get some more in-depth information. Yeah, that's how I would do it. And it totally works. I've done it many, many, many times. Certainly. I think that's that's just a, a really like great out of the box no, way. No, no, let's call I it think. what it is. It's genius. <laughs> it's call genius. it what it is. There call a go. spade a spade. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It is ge- it really is genius because I I I don't think you're going to be able to get this type of work from, let's say, a, a, a pay-to-play, although you did say that it was some ad somewhere along the line. Now, Keisha, I'm going to bring up a, a thought. <laughs> because of, a, a, you know, this day and age, we have younger people, obviously, that are, you know, getting into um, working and, and doing creative endeavors and possibly hiring us. And so is it possible um, that maybe we can reach out to them on those platforms um, to try to understand how we might get in front of them and present them with our services without, you know, making it be annoying. <laughs> well, you know, using social media to contact, it, it is really, in a sense, untraditional. Um, remember back in the day when we were were young chaps, you know, we would have to, you know, write a letter and put a stamp on the letter. And, Absolutely. And <laughs> send a print, you know. send a print, what, CD, our, our demo CD oh, out absolutely. in the mail. Absolutely, yes. That's right. We don't and do that so, anymore. Yeah. And so, although I'm sure many of my colleagues would frown upon that, I embrace that. And the reason why I embrace that, Anne, is because I've done it. I've done it and it has worked. Now, I'm not saying get crazy. You know, you really still need to figure out a professional way to approach them on social media. You know, I wouldn't go, you know, commenting about somebody's husband. Hey, girl, your husband is sure is a cutie. You know, I wouldn't do that. But, um, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Oh, and by the way, are you hiring? You're looking for voices? Oh, yeah. And by the way. (laughs) What about those platforms that tend to have high search engine optimization like, I'll say it, Fiverr or Upwork or, you know, Freelancer or those, you know, you said you said before it might have been posted on Craig, Craigslist or something. But right. I mean, people do. I mean, it's it's rare, but I have heard of people getting really good jobs. So here, here's you know, my from thing. From postings on those platforms. Absolutely. And, and so why and not? That's I the mean, reason why I don't, I would never discourage someone from doing that because you know it's not impossible but for me personally I do better in 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 spaces that aren't so crowded it's easier for me to stand out if I'm not in a room with 500,000 other voiceover artists if you have that type of patience absolutely go for it but I tend to to fill voids, I tend to I sneak in a lot of back doors. Well, and I think what what I'm learning about you, Keisha, is that really it does like first and foremost, your relationship is how you start to strategize getting work, and that's really unique. I mean, gosh, I've been we've been doing this, I've been doing this for so long, and and we always talk about relationship and networking and relationship and networking, but a lot of times we think of that networking as networking with ourselves. Let's say like at a voice over a conference, nobody really thinks about it as networking for your potential client. Like, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I've, I've done LinkedIn and I've tried to contact people through LinkedIn, but you really look for that additional like way in like let's find the friend of a friend or the contact so, of a contact so here's the thing get in I, this I, way I, I don't mean to, to interrupt but i will forget because i'm an old lady and my memory is bad <laughs> here's the difference i'm just being honest here's the difference <laughs> for you know for those who are on fiverr those that space is for people who prefer opportunities to come to them mm, yeah I am the opposite. I like to go for the opportunities. 
if that makes any sense. Because sure, on Fiverr, absolutely. you make a profile and you, you kind of tell them what you cost and you kind of sit there and you wait for people to contact you. I ain't got that kind of time. I'm 50 years old. Like, mm-hmm, I only got mm-hmm. a good 50 years old, le- uh, 50 years left on this on this earth. I do not have time for the BS. I have got to grasp, grab, and sneak into as many back doors as possible. And I got to, yes. you got to be, you, you know, you got to be a go-getter. You got to seize and the, the back moment. Doors, and, and the back door is important. I'm just going to say that. Oh, yeah. The back door is important because if you try to attack it the front way, <laughs> a lot of times that comes off as cold calling, cold emailing. And that is, I think, so much more difficult. I think I, I think I really love the fact that you try to find the back door and the, and the commonality, um, the commonality of the relationship to, to find an entry point or a way in. This is why I'm so excited about Clubhouse. And I know that's why you're so excited about Clubhouse. When I and literally when I when we talked about it the other day, when I was on it and I, I literally just said, oh, let me enter a room. And it, like, with my shaking, you know, index finger, because it was my first time in a room. I didn't know if my microphone was going to be on. I said, let me just try it. And the second I heard what was going on in that room, I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. Your Why? antenna went up, right? Your Why antenna went right have up. we not had this before? What a brilliant platform. And you need to hop on board um, while it's while it's uh, fresh. <laughs> do, we have a ton- do we have time for a really, really quick story? Sure, absolutely. Because we're talking about back doors. So if you're familiar with Clubhouse, you know, you can kind of like just be a regular old person on Clubhouse or you could be the founder of a club, right? We all want to try to aspire to get that VO Boss Club, right? Oh, we're absolutely doing it. But the way you do that is you have to submit an application, okay? And so I submitted an application for a club and I waited and I waited and I know they're overwhelmed and I'm like, gosh, nobody is going to ever get to my application. So let me tell you what I did. I researched the owner and then I found him on Twitter, and then I saw and then that you followed him. No, no, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't even follow him. I'll tell you what I did. He, he has another page that de- deals with hereditary disease, and I'm kind of familiar with hereditary mm-hmm. disease. So mm-hmm. I approached him on that page. Absolutely, where there everybody is mm-hmm. hanging out on his main page. I, I sent him a message on his hereditary uh, disease page, and I said, "Hey, kudos for you, you know, finding this page." Oh, by the way. <laughs> I heard you have a little something to do with Clubhouse. I said, hey, listen, I have this application. I don't know if you can nudge somebody because he's the Mm -hmm. owner. I'm sure he's not approving applications. I said, I would really appreciate it. Clubhouse has made such a tremendous difference in my life. And girl, the next day, my application was approved. He never responded. I don't know if he had anything to do. I'm sure he did. And I don't believe in happenstance. But you got to find a back door and slip in it. Let's kind of come back to your, you know, acquiring work for promo work. Tell me about, like, I guess if you are selected as the voice, right, of a particular show, um, then it would it would seem to me that you it would be a fairly steady work. And and is it a, I guess depending on the show, is it is it work that you do every day? Is it work you do once a week, or is it you know I I imagine that the the workload is much different for for a show than it is for me doing e learning or a corporate narration or a commercial. Right. Well. Well, the promos that I've done particularly, I mean, you know, have been just for like one shot deals for like a special okay. on own special. or, you know, a one time, um, you know, viewing party for something or the other. That's just been my experience. Of course, I'm going to pounce on my agents to try to get me more promo work this year. But that's mm-hmm. just been my experience. And then, of course, with PBS, that's, you know, season work. So I just get scripts every couple of weeks. How is the market in promo? Do you feel that there is a lot? of opportunity? Are there, is there a lot of work? I mean, I guess it's dependent on, I mean, I like the specials and I think now um, people are really concentrating on the entertainment value while we're all deep into the pandemic here because it's it's our one, it's what we have while we're here at home. I think that they've been doing, a, they've been really doing a lot of good work for television um, in bringing content out. So I think I would hope that that would increase your um, opportunities for promo. Well, as long as there's programming, there will always be promo. And because of the climate that this country has experienced over the past year, I've seen an uptick in promos because there are a lot more specials and a lot more, right, you know, right. programming with regards to the de- pandemic and the racial unrest and and the and the and the, the um 
the um, come on the election and, and stuff like that. Sure. And so oh, very much specialized content. Abs- Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. A lot of specialized yep. content. So there'll always be work as long as this world keeps going bat butt crazy. We're all always have work outside of the regular, you know, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, SNLs and the, the Dancing with the Stars stuff. You know. So then if you get a if you get a job, if you get the gig for for a particular show or special, is it, you know, 24 hour turnaround time? Is it I need it yesterday? Is it, you know, um, multiple sessions that are directed, uh, you know, three it just days really in a row? Depends. Or, it's all of that. Does it depend? It, it's it's all of that plus more. Um, again, when it comes to the specialized content, they definitely need it yesterday. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just somebody could want to do a directed session. But also what I've noticed is a difference in how um, they they are uh, because of, you know, it's the things are needed yesterday. A lot of times they don't even have time to, to dial in. So they, they trust you as right, long just as like you do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as you, you yeah. know, you have a good space and a good mic and they, they know you and they have to get to know you with regards to the kind of content that you're able to produce. Um, but well, yeah. That, yeah. That was my next question. So let's just say you're getting good with an, on, on a show um, that's, you know, maybe it's not a special, but it's a, a show that's continually running and you're, it's with a particular network. Do you stand a better chance of getting more work from that network because they're familiar with your voice or you've been employed, Absolutely. you know, doing that? Yeah, I was Absolutely. just going to say. So then you don't necessarily have to maybe audition. They might say, you know what, Keisha, you'd be great for this new show that we're going to be, you know, promoting and boom that so literally just that the, happened to me yeah I was gonna say that that would be a nice way to get work you know I feel like you don't have to audition I love it when you don't have to audition all the time and if you become like a you know oh this is a Keisha is our voice maybe for the network then you might have multiple opportunities right exactly um, and being accessible and available at all times it certainly helps because I like to think sometimes that oh I got this gig not because I have this great voice or not because I'm super talented it's because when they said we need it now I already did it before they could even finish their sentence it's already in their inbox oh my gosh Keisha there's so much to be said for that I mean I want you bosses out there to to understand what we just said it's sometimes it's not about oh my god Keisha has the best voice in the world for this particular show it's it's so much more than that it's the fact that you have you know you have come through for them you're dependable you're accurate you get the work done and that you're a pleasure to work with which is a big 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 thing um, for for all voiceover work. It's not just for promo work, but any client that you can, you know, get on board and they love you because you're dependable, you're fast and, and you just get the job done. That's just another, it's just a wonderful feather in your cap for, for additional work yes, coming up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so. ma'am. For sure. Wow. So the exciting, the exciting world of promo. Well, Keisha, the best of luck in getting more shows. I want to be able to hear your voice. Thank you. All over the place. Thank so. you so much. I appreciate it. It's good to have well, good cheerleaders in your. You there know, you go. I your... am. A, I am a fan. That's I am great. a fan. That's great. So Thank for you. sure. So I'm going to give a big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. Uh, you too can learn about IPDTL and connect and network like a boss. Find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at VOBoss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.